Good morning, guys. Um, I wanted to do a quick video since I have some time before work. Um, I'm trying to be closer to my phone than last time because um, apparently a bunch of you think I need to get a mic, so I'll work on that. But until then, I'll just kind of try and be a little louder maybe. But um, I wanted to talk about my relationship with my ex-husband at the time of all of this going on with the confrontation and um, what my life was like. So this is my kid's dad. He He's a good person. The problem was he and I were very different. We did try to do therapy, loves our children very much. And I respect him for that. He's also a very, very hard worker. Um, but when it came to our relationship, we had, we really didn't have much. We didn't communicate. We didn't spend time together. And so, you know, we decided to have to get divorced. I said, I wanted a divorce, you know, also, um, I talked to him about what was going on with me confronting my abusers and he tried to support me, I think, as much as he could. He was raised a Jehovah's Witness also. So he was very used to um, there being, there was sexual abuse in his own congregation. Um, totally different congregation in a different state than mine, but the same things going on. Shoved under the rug. So that was kind of his mentality. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of stuff that happened in his life that didn't get dealt with correctly. <clears throat> but he is the kind of person that's just like, don't talk about it, let it go, move forward. And I was done with that mentality. So he tried to support me, like I said, but um, he went to that meeting with me to meet with my brother-in-law and my sister. And he didn't say anything. He ended up having to leave the room because he couldn't handle it or listen. But after that happened, um, you know, they, they turned their kids against me. I got un uninvited to their weddings and um, my, basically my niece who married their youngest son turned against me and I was in a lot of pain, it hurt. Um, so when I started, you know, I'd feel, I'd have days that I was emotional. Um, I was not like this all the time. I'm, I'm a very positive outgoing person. I love to make new friends. I'm the more the merrier kind of person. Like anyone can come over and hang out at my house um, but I still had days where I would just let myself feel the pain and I would cry. And that is not something he knew how to handle. And so he told me, you know, you need to get over it. You need to let it go. You need to move on. And I wasn't really sure where I stood with the religion after I confronted them. I felt very confused and angry because I didn't feel validated. I didn't feel like I had the closure fully that I needed. Um, so I was trying to sort out my feelings and also like who I really was and what I believed. And I felt very guilty because at this point I still felt like I was in the true religion. But I told my husband, you know, I'm not done dealing with this and talking about this. And he was like, just, just sweep it under the rug. You know, like you're causing drama you're making a mess of things. If you were just quiet, everything would be fine. And that just, that was kind of my last straw when he said that to me. That was like everything everyone has always said to me that I am so done with. So at that point, I think, you know, there were other things that were adding to it, but that I remember that sentence and me being like, yeah, I'm done, I, I need to be on my own. So I said I wanted a divorce and he agreed that that was best. Um, so I moved downstairs into the guest room and we lived our lives separately. Um, I kind of slowly stopped going to the meetings and I was trying to figure out who I was and what I really wanted with my life and how I was going to move forward and be alone. Um, so a few months later, I, I had got my own place and around this time I had met someone and was talking to them. Um, I ended up having a relationship with them. This was months after we split up because when you go through a divorce as a Jehovah's Witness, you have to talk to the elders. My ex-husband had, you know, said he had already spoken with them and that they wanted to talk to me. 
So I said, yeah, eventually I will, which now I regret because I didn't even need to. I had absolutely no reason to go, but it's something that you get so used to that you feel like it's an obligation. You have to do it no matter what. So they kept reaching out to me and eventually I agreed to meet with them and they talked to me about um, my relationship and told me that I had committed adultery and I said I didn't agree with that because I had left my ex-husband. I lived on my own. I didn't cheat on him. According to the organization, if you're still married, even if you get a, a legal divorce then and you move on, you're still married. And you, until someone has sex with someone else, then the marriage is broken. And that is the person, whoever does it, that gets disciplined. Well, I had been questioning at this point everything about the organization, but I felt guilty because I thought it was me. I thought that I, I just didn't really know what I felt. I just thought that it was still the right religion, that I just was very angry with the men in it. So at that meeting, I had a lot of triggers. They started telling me, you know, that I was setting a bad example for others, that I was setting a bad example for my kids, that I had turned my back on God, that I was just, you know, bad person, bad person, bad person, and that I had given Jehovah a bad name just by um, the person that I was talking to and seeing that just by, by being with him that I was giving God a bad name by my behavior. Yeah, it was horrible. It was really horrible, and they just beat me down and I was bawling and crying and I started to have a panic attack. I had to go into the bathroom and I threw up because I felt sick. And when I came back, they told me that they had decided to disfellowship me. And I had a feeling it was coming just because I knew the rules. I didn't agree with them, but I knew them. And I was just like, Fine. You know, at this point, what I really needed most because I was struggling from my past was love. I needed to feel loved. I needed to feel supported. I needed to feel worth something. And every person I turned to made me feel like I was worthless. Like I wasn't worth it. I wasn't valued and loved. And so I left that meeting very low, very depressed and very angry. And I quit going to meetings after that. And I just told myself, I prayed to God constantly and I cried and I said, how can this be the right religion? How can people treat other people so bad when they need love and support the most? Why do they get beat down at those moments? And I started to look up um, ex Jehovah's Witnesses because I had just become one. I had become disfellowshipped and I wanted somebody to talk to that understood what I was going through. I was like craving to have someone who understood what I had felt. And I started to watch videos on YouTube of what people went through. And I came across the Leah Rimini series where she had Jehovah's Witnesses on her episode. And when I saw those people on that episode talk about their personal experiences and I saw myself in in them and what they went through. And, you know, a lot of them went through much worse than I could ever even imagine going through. And my heart just went out to them and I felt not alone. And I felt like, okay, this is a lot bigger than what I realized. So then I just, I started to research the religion like crazy. And that is when I started to feel powerful because I found so much out that I had no clue about. And, you know, they really, really hide it from you and tell you, you know, apostates are poison. So people won't look because they want them to be so afraid that they're committing like a gross sin. If they look at anything from an ex Jehovah's Witness, when really that's how you find out the truth of what is really going on in the organization. They paint this picture of, oh, it's love and it's unity all around the world, but they hide so much that people don't know what they're really in. And I'm so thankful that I was able to do real research from history, from science, from extra hose witnesses and prove to myself that this is a cult.
and it is damaging, it's abusive, manipulative, all of it. And it's very, very sad for the people that are stuck in, in it. I first read the book Crisis of Conscience and the reason I chose that book was because it was an ex-governing body member, an ex-anointed person. So I felt like if someone that was supposedly anointed by God was part of the governing body could leave, I want to know why. And I do not think that God would ever be upset at anyone questioning that, especially since I was 12 years old when I got baptized and I dedicated my life to God, which I don't think you can even do at 12 years old because you don't understand what it means. You don't understand what you're doing, especially in a Jehovah's Witness organization. But I read that book and that gave me a whole nother perspective because he was right in there with the governing body and he's such a good person he has nothing bad to say about the people he is full of love and forgiveness and kindness and so much more love than i see in the governing body itself now that i trusted him and he had all of the documents that you can look up you know that are real in his book and you know it's funny because the ex jehovah's witnesses actually have the documentation to prove what they're saying whereas the organization hides it all they don't have anything to back them up so they tell you you know go on faith go on faith go on faith and all these jehovah's witnesses are just blinded because they're they're following by these men eight men in the entire world eight men that are supposedly god's channel and they're not even close. So anyways, I, I read that book that changed how I felt about the organization, but I still had so many questions like, well, they're still the only religion that is preaching worldwide. And Matthew 24, 14 says, you know, that the end would come when the, when the, the world was preached to. So I'm like, so how can any other religion be right? So I researched that scripture. You know, it's funny because there isn't just one interpretation to a scripture. If you look up all kinds of Bible scholars and translators of the original Hebrew words, you're going to come up with similar things, but nothing's going to be identical um, because we don't have an English word for every Hebrew word or Greek word. We have similar words, but we don't have one word for everything. So things are going to be translated slightly differently. But the Jehovah's Witnesses are like, our, our translation is the only one. It's the only right one. So you really have to dig and look and figure it out for yourself. I did that. And, you know, I found out that Jesus was referring to Jerusalem. And so when he talked about the preaching work, he was talking about at that time, you know, the whole inhabited earth. That was everyone that lived on the earth at that time. So it wasn't referring to us having to go door to door and preach to the entire world before the end came. He did make some references to the time of the end, but that is not a qualification of God's true people that they have to be going door to door. And, you know, there's other, this is what I believe and I've learned. I'm not telling all of you what to believe because this is what I have come to learn for myself and why I have faith now that it is the wrong religion. There's other things too that made me question oh like using god's name so the witnesses say no one else is using god's name and that or the bible says god's name is going to be sanctified and how important his name is how important his name is well there are other religions that use the name jehovah the the name jehovah is not even 100 percent accurate nobody really knows how god's name is pronounced and they say you know well as long as we're trying to use it that's what counts but YHWH is what we all know is the original Hebrew for God's name. It was removed in the Greek scriptures, so we don't even know 100% where exactly it was. There's a lot of speculation about where it was supposed to be and where it was taken out. But I don't have any faith in the Jehovah's Witnesses, so I don't trust what they have to say. So I'm doing my own research about where God's name should have been in there. Hey, so my storage is full and it keeps cutting me off. It's cut me off twice. So I'm going to stop. Sorry, it's ending so abruptly. I am getting my new phone with more storage here in a couple of days. So I'll be able to do longer videos probably. So I will try and upload another one soon. I have way more to talk about. I want to talk about how I've changed and 
the positive things in my life and how this has impacted me um, and my children. So I will be back soon. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you all for the wonderful support in the comments. And I just appreciate you all very much. I really feel like this has become therapy for me, but hearing that it's helping other people is, is even more important to me. So thank you again, and I will talk to you soon.